Welcome back, my friends, to The Elder Scrolls Online, but I'm playing on a mobile right now, if you can believe it. What if I told you guys that you can try out The Elder Scrolls Online and the latest Morrowind expansion for free? right now. I'll be showing you exactly how to do that and giving you 16 beginner tips to get you started in the game. And this idea was all made possible by today's sponsor, Stadia, bringing you ESO and the Morrowind chapter expansion for free right now. And it's even cross-play, so you're not going to lose any progress on PC. And I'm also going to be giving away a few key codes for the new ESO expansion, Greymore. Hey, you're finally awake. We just crossed the border. Which actually takes us back to the lands of Skyrim. If you guys want to win that, just comment below, hashtag ESO in the comment section, and also give the video a like, and then I'll pick a winner from there. Now, if you didn't know, Stadia is a service where Google runs the game for you using all the powerful hardware on their servers. So you don't need to do anything. You don't need a gaming PC. You don't need to own a console. Instead, Google streams the game to one of the screens in your house, like a laptop, compatible phone, PC, and you don't need a Stadia controller to play anymore. You can just grab any controller like this one I use, or even just play on a mouse and keyboard. It's completely up to you. Now, if you want to play at home on your TV, you will need a Google Chromecast Ultra. And if you're on your phone, you just need to download the Stadia app. And the quality of the game stream will depend on your internet speed. You can also swap seamlessly between screens from your mobile to your TV to your laptop and back again. And if you're watching this from a hotel or somewhere you don't have any controller, don't worry, you can play on your mobile phone. I actually had no idea they added this, but they have on-screen mobile phones controls now and it just blows my mind that you can literally play on a 130 gigabyte mmo on a mobile like this it's nuts so finally to start playing the elder scrolls online for free here's what you need to do firstly go over to stadia.com or just google it and then just create an account to access stadia for free you buy games just like you normally would from any store. But instead of downloading or installing and updating the game, you can literally just click and play whenever you want as long as you have internet access. And this is like kind of ridiculous because The Elder Scrolls Online specifically is like 130 gigabytes big and I think even bigger if you're playing on a Mac. And the game also has weekly updates and patches that are also really big. And a lot of players usually complain about those being an issue. So Stadia completely removes that as being a problem in the first place, which is kind of just crazy to comprehend. You also have Stadia Pro, which costs $10 per month. It lets you play games at 4K 60 FPS, but most importantly includes free games that you can claim every single month. Like last month, you could get Player Unknown's Battlegrounds for free. There's a free title each month like Destiny 2, Grid, and all the other ones you can see on screen. However, you don't need to worry about that Stadia Pro subscription because right now Stadia are giving you one month of Stadia Pro for free. So you don't need to pay anything. So once you've made an account, you can go ahead and claim the Elder Scrolls Online for free and try it out for yourself. It's really that simple. So now you've made your Stadia account, you're going to look in the description and you're going to find a link. As long as you've logged into your Stadia account and claimed ESO for free, clicking that link will start the Elder Scrolls Online instantly ready to play. And remember, if you already play on PC, it's actually cross-play with Stadia, so you won't lose any progression and you can play with your friends still as well. So now we're in ESO, let's make a new character and start out with tip number one. If you're wondering what the absolute best race is for each role in the game, damage, tank and healer, here's my advice. For healer, the best choice is Breton, High Elf or Argonian. And if you want to play a tank, pick a Nord or an Argonian. If you want to play a Magicka based damage class that uses destruction staffs, pick a High Elf, Dark Elf or Breton. Finally, if you want to play a stamina based damage class that uses a bow, two handed or dual wield weapons, then pick an Orc, a Red Guard, Dark Elf, Khajiit, or Wood Elf. Tip number two, as soon as you finish the tutorial, you're going to have free skill points to spend. You should invest each of these skill points into your class skill lines. Each class has three different skill lines specific to that class. Here at the top, we're just going to grab the first ability in each of these skill lines. Now these abilities will appear on your active bar for use and whatever abilities you have on this bar are the skills that you're going to be leveling as you play the game. So by having all three here, you're going to be leveling all three skill lines at once. That, my friends, is efficiency. 
Tip number three, your character's attributes. Now remember, if you mess up your attributes or skills, you can just pay in-game gold to reset them anytime you like. So they're not set in stone. Don't worry if this goes wrong or you want to experiment a bit. But the general meta for the Elder Scrolls Online, especially while leveling, is not like Skyrim. When you level, you want to deal damage. So if you're playing a tank, you would usually put all of your points into health. However, you wouldn't be doing any damage, so don't level up as a tank. Wait until later in the game. If you're playing a Magicka based build with a staff, put everything into Magicka. Even in the end game dungeons, this is what you're going to be doing to maximize the amount of damage you do with Magicka based weapons such as staffs. The same goes for stamina based damage builds as well. If you're using a bow, two handed weapon, or dual wielding, put all of your points into stamina. Tip number four. Pick a primary weapon skill. This could be a bow, a staff, dual wielding, swords and shield, whatever you want. Just equip the weapon and then kill some enemies and you will then unlock the weapon skill line. Then you can go and grab another ability from that skill line and put it on your bar, ready to level that up as well. So we're just leveling all these skill lines at once so far. Tip number five. Each time you level up in ESO, you will receive level up rewards in the form of armor, weapons, jewelry, and food. Now you need to claim these each time you level up. Don't worry, you can't miss them or anything. At level 10 though, you'll get a free horse. So don't bother buying one for 10,000 gold in game. It's just a waste of money. Just wait until you're level 10 and get one for free. Tip number six, armor. The Elder Scrolls Online has three types of armor, heavy, medium, light. Which one you use depends on your character's build, but most of the time people actually use a combination of them. So it's important that we actually level them all up at once. For example, if you wear a heavy armored chest, you gain a large armor boost, but it still only counts as one piece of heavy armor. So if the rest is medium armor, you'll get lots of stamina regeneration as well. So at the start of the game, you're going to want to wear a combination of light, medium and heavy armor just to level up all those skill lines associated with it at once. Now to unlock each armor skill line, you need to equip three pieces of armor of that type, like three pieces of light armor or heavy armor to unlock the heavy armor skill line and so on. Pretty simple, but unless someone tells you, you'll just end up with level 50 light armor and nothing else. Tip number seven, you need to unlock the Mages Guild and the Fighters Guild skill lines as soon as possible. Now the Fighters Guild skill line is leveled up by killing Undead and Daedra, so you can pretty much level it just by playing the game. And the Mages Guild skill line is leveled up by collecting these blue glowing lore books you'll find scattered around the map. But to start leveling, we must first unlock the skill lines. It's really easy to do this just travel to your faction's major starting city. This will be one of the only areas on the map that you see a way shrine. So if you're in the Daggerfall Covenant, it's here in Glenumbra, in the city of Daggerfall, just here on the map. Once you arrive in the city, you're going to want to look for this sword icon, that's the Fighters Guild, and this eye, eye and the eye icon represents the Mages Guild. For the Ebonheart Pact, it's just here on the map in Mournhold in the city of Deshan. For the Aldmeri Dominion, it's here on the map in Gratwood in the city of Eldenroot. Now once you arrive in your home city, just go and find the guild, be it Fighters or Majors Guild, and then talk to one of the members there, and they will unlock the skill line for you after you've started that faction's quest line. It's important that you do this at the start, and then you can just level up these skill lines as you play the game naturally, and not have to worry about grinding them when you find them later on in the game. So you're just saving your own time, really. Now we have tip number eight, leveling and questing. There are so many quests in ESO, it's just silly. I haven't even done all of the quests in the base game and I've been playing this since the beta. While there are so many ways to power level up your character really fast, I actually recommend as a new player that you take it easy and figure out the game on your own way. And just really take your time to enjoy the voice acted quests that are actually really good in the Elder Scrolls Online compared to many other MMOs, which, you know, many of the quests just are go here and kill 10 of this enemy and then come back and I'll give you some gold. They actually have a lot of storyline and interesting lore behind them. So take time to enjoy it. Each quest that you finish will reward you with a big chunk of experience 
and some items as well. Focusing on the main quest will actually give you a lot of extra skill points too, so it's definitely worth doing that at the start of the game. Tip number 9. Food and drink will give you a huge buff to your character's stats, through health or regeneration of your resources like magicka, stamina and health. It's an integral part of the game and these buffs last for hours. Don't worry about saving any of the crown store food or potions since you can actually craft and buy better stuff in the game anyway. Tip number 10. Find and collect all of the sky shards that you come across. Sky shards are scattered around the world of VSO and each zone has about 10 to 15 to collect. For every three you find you'll get an additional skill point to improve your character with. You can find maps and add-ons online that will make finding these sky shards really easy for you. Tip number 11. Morph your skills. Each skill in ESO levels up from 1 to 4. Once it reaches level 4 you can then morph that skill. For an additional skill point you can make the skill do an extra effect. The morph that you pick usually depends on your character's build though. Don't worry too much about this at the start of the game because you can reset it later. For now I recommend instead of morphing your skills just select a new skill and put that on your skill bar and then start leveling up all the different skills until you max out as many as you can. This is a much faster way to level up your character's skill lines for later and also helps you understand the game a little bit better and what your abilities do. Tip number 12. Unlock your passives. Each skill line has a set of passive abilities. Some are more useful than others. Usually the most useful reduce the costs of abilities or increase the amount of damage you do. So make sure you prioritise these sort of passives. They'll generally make it easier to play the game especially as you level up and 10% increase in damage becomes a lot of extra damage or sustain. Tip number 13. At level 15 you will gain the ability to weapon swap. This gives you a whole new bar of skills that you then have active on your character which means you can level up multiple skills even faster and also more importantly equip two weapons. The weapon choice is completely up to you but there are a lot of build guides online that you can follow for getting an idea of what two weapons work best. For example two handed and bow or dual wield and bow if you're playing a stamina based class. Tip number 14 is to start upgrading your mount. Once you reach level 10, as I said earlier, you'll get a free horse. And at each city in the game, you'll see a horse icon. Go to the stable and talk to the stable master about upgrading your horse. It will cost you 250 gold for a 1% increase and can only be upgraded once per day. So it will take you a long time to max out your stats. Your mounts all share the same stat page, by the way but it's separate for each one of your characters. So I recommend upgrading the speed stat at the start to help you explore a lot faster. Stamina is only really going to be good in player versus player since your horse has unlimited sprint until you get interrupted by an enemy. Carry weight, however, is really helpful because it upgrades the amount of storage that your character can carry. So if you're running around collecting lots of stuff, obviously having more carry weight is going to be helpful to you. Tip number 15. You can also find a bag merchant in the city who will offer you an upgrade on how much your character can actually carry. This will cost you some in-game gold and the price will increase each time you upgrade it. I recommend having an inventory space of at least 100 for all the loot and crafting materials that you're going to be carrying. You can also upgrade your bank space as well but at the start of the game it's just not as important. Tip number 16, read all of the bookshelves in ESO because each one has a chance of giving you a random skill point increase for reading them. Some of them also count as lore books which will increase your mage guild skill line as well. So make a habit of doing this where you can. And that my friends are my top 16 starter tips for the Elder Scrolls Online. They were rapid I know and I hope you took in as much knowledge as possible. So go now and put these tips into practice for yourself in the Elder Scrolls Online. Sign up to Stadia in the description and instantly boot up and get ready to play. And a big thank you to Stadia for supporting the channel and sponsoring this video. And a big thanks for you guys for watching.